Welcome back to NetTouch, your best source for daily articles and video screencasts. In this one, I'm going to show you how to work with the font face property. So, luckily, there's a site called Font Squirrel that makes the process as easy as possible. They offer just a plethora of fonts that you can also use for free commercially without having to worry about whether you have the correct license to do so. They also include these font face kits that you can use that are pretty much optimized for the font face property. Or, if you have your own font, they also include a font face generator. But we're going to work with a kit, and I'm going to scroll down, and you can see they just have hundreds to choose from. So, I'm going to just take a look here. Let's just grab something like, how about this one, block letters. So, I'm going to click on Get Kit, and that's going to save it. Next, we're going to go and create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it Font Face. And let's unzip that and drag it in. And then finally, just because that's a huge name, I'm going to rename it to Type. All right, let's bring this into TextMate. And let's create a new file called index.html. And the last thing I want to do is just load that in Firefox so we have something to work with. Okay. So, a great thing also about Font Squirrel is they include demos that you can pretty much kind of uh, figure out. So, we're going to load the style sheet, and you can see here's the style sheet for what we have. So, if you want, you can reference the vendor. That's usually a good practice to pay tribute. And now we're going to go back to index.html. And let's open style tags, and I'm going to paste that in. Now, don't worry, we're, we're going to go over this, but it saves a little bit of time on the typing. So the first thing we can see is font family. That's a huge word, and it's going to be too hard for me to remember, so I'm going to rename it to something like block regular, block italic. I think that's right. Those might be switched. I'm not sure which one is regular. And here it looks like BLOK heavy. Okay. Now, the great thing is it's as simple as doing get all heading one tags and set the font family to block heavy. And then if we want to do a fallback for browsers that won't support this, we can just do something different. We'll just do Hel Helvetica Arial. And let's go ahead and add an H1 tag, and then we're going to go over this. Okay, font face. Notice we have three declarations here. Anytime you want to do a different style, you unfortunately have to reference font face again. So you can see here, we've done it for regular, and then italic, and then for the bold weight. Now, notice here that we have all these URLs. URLs. Well, first, we need to make sure that they uh, go to the correct path. So we need to append type here to make sure they know to look into the type folder first. So give me just a moment to paste these in. And then finally, notice the different font formats here. So we have EOT and TrueType. Why do we have these different? And it's because, of course, Internet Explorer has its own method, and they prefer to use the EOT method, and they won't even respond to TrueType or anything like that. So we want to make sure that Internet Explorer doesn't attempt to load all of these fonts and waste on bandwidth if it's just going to, to hiccup anyways. So the way we get around that is we have to make sure that we load the EOT format first. And then we create a new declaration to override that. Now, you might be wondering how come Internet Explorer won't try to load these anyways based on how CSS works and the lower it is on the page, the more precedence it will take. And the reason is because if we have all these commas and these local declarations, Internet Explorer won't understand it and it's going to skip it completely, thus only rendering this right here. So you see we're simply first doing a source for Internet Explorer, and then what are these locals? Well, first, we don't want to load a font if it's already on the user's computer. So we look for it with this name, and if it doesn't come up, we'll try this different name. Maybe they have it named differently. And finally, as a last resort, we're going to load the font, and we set the format to whatever it is, in this case, true type. And it's really as simple as that. This is the exact same thing just for the italic version and the, uh, the heavy version. So if I refresh the page, Sure enough, it works perfectly. We can apply that to any property we want. It's going to work on all browsers. If we want to go into my virtual machine and uh, let's load up font face, load that, and sure enough, it's working. So it's as simple as that. There are some quirks you need to take a look at, but we can discuss that in the comments, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.